risk v course, you're making a microcontroller unit, you're making a high performance computing, anything AI related, you should have risk v inside and you can get it from the Open Hardware Foundation, which is now part of Eclipse. And we're gonna talk about what everybody's been talking about in Embedded World, which is AI, as they did at CES. The interesting thing about chatting about AI is they seem to be not talking about the implications of what that means to you as design engineers. Because the moment AI starts getting into your systems, the moment you have to start dealing with the, the, the volume of data, the speed of data, the power consumption of that data from that MCU, that AI chip, everything else on the board is gonna change. And you're gonna be given the problem of solving all those problems. So I thought we'd ask, we'd pose that question to Florian so first of all, give us some context of what the Open Hardware Foundation is, and then answer the question. Man, Guy, that's a good question. So let me start firstly with the Open Hardware. We're a non-profit and we are making RISC-V IP. RISC-V CPU IP, you're making AI, you need to have a CPU inside. RISC-V is the choice everyone is going for, more flexible, you can adjust it. And we are doing these things and making it open source. So we are putting it on GitHub. We are working with big companies. They are our members. They are contributing. They are verifying it. So you have the quality you need to make a commercial chip out of this IP. The IP we are making is all in Verilog. So the tools in the industry understand it. They can use it. And yeah, a lot of this IP is used for AI related things. One last thing, we had some big news, and sorry for just hijacking your video. You're allowed to have your own news, because you got your own logo, so you might as well have your own news. Well, I just <laughs> hijack it anyway. So, some big news, we are now becoming a part of the Eclipse Foundation. The Eclipse Foundation, we already worked together with them a long time. They help us for the committing process to make sure we know who committed which part of IP, if it's open source or not. Yeah. And they also helped us with IT and other infrastructure, so we decided, why not put together, become a part of the Eclipse Foundation, which allows the open hardware to focus on what we are good at making industrial grade open source RISC-V CPU IP. So now we are joining it. We rebranding from open hardware group to open hardware foundation. I think that's good for the community that will bring a lot of effort for a lot of people and is helping to grow all this AI demand for CPUs. And Excellent. the demand is everywhere. It, it's, it is everywhere and it's going to be non-stop. So, our community, design engineers, you know what you're talking about. You have experience. No one is talking about the implications of, M of AI for design engineers and the long-term, medium-term, short-term Im implications for design engineers the moment we start embedding these chips and asking them to do what, what we want them to do for that next generation of processing. I believe that every single component in the system, not just the component in the hardware, but the software too, all of a sudden, all bets are gonna be off because the efficiency of the power, the efficiency of the processing, the efficient, efficiency use, easy for me to say, efficiency of the use of the memory, everything is almost gonna to have to start again. So for me, when I talk to all these companies in Embedded World, no one seems, everyone wants to sell, quite rightly, I understand why they want to sell what they want to sell, but they live in a bubble of, I've just got this, buy this, and then we move on to the next thing. I actually think that the implications for design engineers in the next year, 18 months, two years, is huge because the world is gonna so fundamentally change in the world of design. Yes, and I think you are right. I think the funny point is everyone is aware that there is AI and it will help. But what you just mentioned, the whole world will change because everyone will apply in some way AI. So the guys who are making the chips are applying already AI, like design engineers who designed a chip before they did everything by themselves. Now they have AI who support them so they can have some boring tasks automatically suggested by AI. They only review it. Yes, that's good. We are putting it inside. They have more time to bring new features in. And that's the guys who are making the chip. Now, the guys who are putting the chips on PCBs and connecting them, they are also talking about AI, but they also got support from AI. So they get layout tools which are AI supported so they can make yep. more different designs or they can adjust the designs. Like you're having a design which you maybe use in agriculture, 
and you're leveraging some AI in the chips for agriculture to check something, because AI is helping you to design the PCB, you maybe can more easily respin it for a different thing like medical is maybe too crazy, but something like in traffic control in cities, yeah. you can respin it because you have more time thanks to the help of AI. So AI is actually having a lot of impact because everyone somehow leverages. the question and the answer. Yes. And there will be some big implementation uh, implications. Things will accelerate. It will be more fast. The cycles will be more faster. That might put more pressure on us to keep up with everything, but it also will allow us to have things more customized. So the question and the answer is having a big impact. The only thing I'm pretty sure is we need to keep learning about this stuff and need to yeah, adapt it, use it, learn, understand how it works, how it can best work for me, but also look downstream and upstream. How the guys, if you're uh, making a PCB board, understand how the guys who are making chips are leveraging AI, what is coming to you, but then also understand how your customer who are buying your products are leveraging AI. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's interesting because I, 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 you know, talking to everybody over the last year, it, 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 it just struck me that the world, everything is going to get very challenged and everything is going to, everything's going to be compromised. That's the best word. Everything, everything in the system is going to, is going to get compromised. Yeah. So that's a starting point. But I think it's interesting because you've suggested that what would be perceived as being a problem, because I've just absolutely laid it down as being a problem. You're saying actually inherently AI then is going to come up from, from, from beneath uh, or above, whichever way you look at it. And it's going to actually then help you because it's going to speed up the evaluation process to make things better. So although it's going to create problems for you because of all those things we just talked about, speed of data, using app power, stressing everything out, what you're saying is, oh, but hang on a minute. The fact that it even exists is going to give you the opportunity to evaluate things much quicker and learn quicker. Yes, absolutely. Let's look on an example from open hardware, for example. We make this RISC-V CPU IP. So back in the days, you had to design all the CPU by yourself. Then you need to verify it, that it's working exactly how it should be. There are already first AI agents inside, which help you for the verification. So you just say that's a RISC-V CPU, help me to verify, and it comes up with a basic plan. But it still needs a human who is reviewing it, who is giving it the final touch. But people using it today and that allows them to do more interesting, more customized products because they have more free time they can use for others. Yes. Yes. Or to visit shows like Embedded World so they can learn more. Exactly. Yeah. Or watch your YouTube video if they have more time because the AI is doing a lot of the work. Yes. So I think what you're saying is that AI chips are coming. Let's not let's not worry about that because that's that's a that's a uh, that's a certainty. They're going to empower amazing things. Don't be afraid of it because they're also going to solve problems at the back end too. But your real message to a community like our IP exchange community who are having to deal with disruptive problems every day, they're being asked to create disruptive problems every day. Embrace it, use it to learn and you use it to create a platform where you can be more creative, where you can create better solutions as a platform rather than something to fear. Yeah, I think definitely that is a, that's what I'm trying to say is don't have to fear, but embrace it. Yeah. It means be aware of what is happening, but don't be only aware of your own field. Look down oh, what is coming from totally. down. Look up what are your customers doing and then see how you can integrate the AI. How can you help the customers to do it? Because in the end, we still need to create great products. We still want to sell something and create value in the market. It's all about creating value someone is willing to pay for. So the question is, how can we do this better with AI? Yeah, yeah. Well, and it's interesting because you talk about the creative process, which I think at the, at the very essence of design engineering is creativity. Every designer solving. is a creative guy. Totally. Yes. It's problem solving, which is a, the human essence. The human essence is to have a problem, to solve it. That's why we're the most successful uh, beings on the planet because we solve problems. And you know, when we go uh, with I IP Exchange, we go we, we we go around the world and we go to these shows. And you know, 
we on purpose don't and it's not because they're not great companies, because they are great companies. But the major, major semiconductor companies, which are great companies, they are the backbone of our industry, and we couldn't do what, what, what we do without them. But every time I go to one of these shows and I report back to our community, I stumble across companies that I have never heard of. I have no idea they existed. I had no idea that they were solving those problems. I had no idea that they had a solution to something that I never even knew there was a problem to. And that is a continuous churn of innovation, yeah. a continuous churn of creativity. There is actually also one more thing because you see all these companies, but like you're going here on the embedded world, North America, you see a lot of companies using the same terms like AI or edge AI. But the very interesting thing, what I got you one. found, they're all using the word fleet. They all started using fleet. Oh. I don't know where that's <laughs> But everybody started, I think everybody's now a naval officer. There's my fleet. <laughs> that's my fleet. That's my we called it smart things before, now we are calling it smart. Now they're fleet. Yeah. But there you go. The interesting thing is everyone is kind of using the same term or this kind of high-level term, but in different ways. Look at some chip manufacturers like Silicon Labs, for example. They say they do edge AI. But then you go to ASUS and they are also saying we are doing Edge AI, but Silicon Labs has a small CPU and ASUS has a big surfer. Yeah. So the thing is, so no the one of them is it's completely wrong. different. Yes. Yeah. And no one is really wrong about it. They are all doing great things. And that's what, I, what I'm trying to say. You need to keep looking up and down. What are the chip guys doing? How does it fit in this bigger surfer? What is the different market they are addressing? Because in reality, it's not really different. It all is interconnected, yep. interweaven. Yeah. So don't get locked in your bubble. Don't get locked in, I'm the Bluetooth engineer, I'm the antenna engineer, I'm the CPU engineer, I'm the whatever engineer. Actually, it's all interconnected. And I have to know, as I, I you know, I, I have to be uh, a phrase that I heard the other day, uh, an inch deep, but a mile wide. You have to know, you have to have a taster for everything in order in order to understand the context of the problem you're trying to solve today. Still need to, you still need to have your domain know-how, but I fully agree with you. You need to get a better picture for the overall, and you need to understand what are people really expecting when they are talking about edge AI or so. Yeah. And there are a lot of good explanations. So everyone has a different view, be aware of this, but then also use the tools. For example, you mentioned Bluetooth engineer or antenna engineer. If you're one of this, that's great. We need you. We need these guys. But also AI can do some of the boring parts of this job. But that's great because that gives you more time to focus on some new innovations in the antenna design, in the Bluetooth design or so on. But don't stay where you are. Keep learning. Yeah. Keep updating yourself. Yeah. So I think Real podcasters, of course, of which I'm not one. Real podcasters would have called this a fireside chat. A fireside chat. It's really on fire in but the it's, sun. <laughs> it's actually quite hot. So, uh, haven't bought you uh, a new board. Haven't bought you a new chip. Haven't bought you a new piece of software. We've had a fireside chat with Florian from... A fireside Open. chat in the sun. No fire involved. Only the sun. And Risk Five, of course, from the Open Hardware Foundation. Now part of the Eclipse. Oh, did you mention that? D I'm not sure. Is it okay I do some marketing? Do it. Okay. Whatever. Risk five course. You're making a microcontroller unit. You're making a high performance CP, a uh, high performance computing, anything AI related. You should have Risk five inside, and you can get it from the Open Hardware Foundation, which is now part of Eclipse. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, hey, yeah. I hope that was not too over. Not at all. Not at all. Not at good, all. Good, good, good. Bless your heart. My pleasure, Guy. Always great to be here at the IP Exchange. The message is keep learning, keep experimenting. Yes. Be open hearted and open souled, open intellect. Go to shows like Embedded World, wander around, ask questions, delve, rummage, discover stuff you didn't know. Don't stay in your cubicle. Don't think things like IP Exchange have all your answers. I try, we try, but we will fail. We cannot cover everything and we don't have all the answers to your questions. So go to Embedded World, wherever it is, whether it's in Nuremberg, whether it's here, I think it's gonna be in Anaheim next year. 
go to your embedded world, rummage around, meet people like Florian with years of experience and knowledge and learn. Thank you. Thank you for listening on our fireside chat. Thanks, everyone. It was a pleasure, Guy.